Oh baby, welcome back to the worm. It's a little bit early for me to be making videos. I usually don't do that till after breakfast, but uh, just got a text saying, did you see the big storm tomorrow? And I hadn't, I knew it was supposed to snow a little bit, but uh, it's looking gnarly. So I thought you guys would probably like to see the storm. I don't know if I've had a really solid winter storm in the cabin when it was completely finished, have I? I mean, I know last winter, Tito and I spent a couple of storms in here, but it was, I mean, it was pretty bare. And, uh, I mean, if it was just snow, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but it's supposed to be gusting over 35, so it's going to be pretty serious, and we've just got some fresh snow on the ground, too. I was planning on taking it easy today. Now I've got a lot of stuff to do. We only got about four fresh inches on the ground, but if we're going to get as much as it looks like, I should probably go and track pack a whole bunch of the trails today. I'll do that when I take the plow out of here. I'm going to have to do a little more, a tiny bit more video editing, just because it'll use up some batteries, and then I need to recharge everything, so we'll run the generator, get the jackeries topped off. Ooh, yep, that one's completely dead. This one I got out, uh, I forgot I bought a while back. It's just another like LED light, but I was using it. You probably saw in the last video. It's perfect for doing. <laughs> it's perfect for tattooing because you can uh, rotate it down, and it's really stinking bright. And all that tattooing it was basically two days. We only used up half a battery, and then of course we got the machete light and the outside light. Yep, those both need some charging. Anyway, I hate to do it because it just kills the day. But I got to run out and get some groceries really like to cook in here but maybe we could do mac and cheese or something i say we you don't have to eat it you eat whatever you want the good thing is for a storm like this most of the work is today and then tomorrow maybe a little plowing and i'm kind of uh can i say keen is that too weird i'm kind of keen on the idea of doing a few more tattoos working on that so we'll see we better get going well luckily it's not buried so, I don't know, maybe we'll have to get a tarp or something to sit on or I'm gonna get soaked. Of course, I do have a cabin with a heater. I don't know if you knew that, I do. It's right over there and I can dry stuff out. plow on, drive the four-wheeler over top of it, and then it, you have to raise the frame of the plow up, and there's a little hole that has to line up with another hole on both sides to put pins in, which, of course, it never works. You can't just drive up there and get it. It has to be within a sixteenth, maybe, of an inch, <laughs> and the twist sideways. I just drove up there and lifted it up. The pins went right in. It's going to be a good winter. And do they make a different kind of pin? Doing this twice a year, I know it's not a big deal, but these little pins that you bend, what is that, a clevis or I don't know what it's called. You do that a bunch of times, they break. Sometimes your hands are cold, they're hard to get open. There must be a better pin to put in there. Clevis, clevis, clevis is a pin. Clovis is a people, an old people. When I become president slash high ruler of the entire world, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this two sets of tools crap. The SAE and the metric. And then the second thing I'm going to do is give everybody a few acres of property and one chainsaw. So vote for me. Vote for me. Groceries. Got a couple salads, a lot of apples, you got eggs. Wow, there's not much in here. Might be eating a lot of granola. I really don't like going out, even just for a short trip. <laughs> I don't know, it just cuts up my day out here. I was out last week and topped up my propane. Let's make sure that it's still full here. 
Looking for one red line, looks good. If it's all red, then a half of it's out. These two are turned on, these two are still full, so we got enough for uh, weeks. Oh, wouldn't that be sweet if it just, just snowed straight for two weeks? All right, I'm gonna go get groceries. See you in a few. <laughs> we got food and I've never really done this before, but this time of year, whoa, oh, there it goes. This time of year, I could actually have frozen food out here, which seems really bizarre. And milk and strawberries are all set. Some vegetables. And picked up some uh, mechanical pencils for my tattoo, tattoo drawing. I know. I know what it looks like. It looks like I'm about to fall asleep, and I am, but you want to get your your brain exploded look at that i'm working on last week's video whoa is that crazy or what i gotta finish going through it one last time because processing this into a video that can actually be uploaded takes quite a while and it takes a lot of power so i like to do it when the generator is running so i can plug this directly in to the wall socket which is goes to the generator while everything else is charging because right now, let's see what we got left on here. 30%, by the time I'm done, I wouldn't have enough battery power to process this anyway. So just, you know, if I fall asleep for a minute, don't give me a hard time. If you saw last week's video, you have my apologies. The very end of the video with the uh, trail cam images and videos, can't figure out how to make them look good. It's a weird thing to say because this is what I do full time is make these videos for you guys. But I'm not a video genius. Trail cam videos look fine on my phone. Can't make it look fine for you, so you're gonna have to deal with it. All right, start the generator and then I got one more thing I wanna do tonight. <clears throat> I didn't put it on a video. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did end up putting a second outlet in the cabin just cause I was worried about charging all my stuff, which includes two Jackeries one of which draws a lot of power on the same outlet. So now they're run to two and I got two cords that go to this. Is it necessary? How would you know? I want you just not to worry. I've done all the cal calculations and I'm not anywhere close to overloading the circuit. charger doesn't work quite as well as the slightly newer ones and this is the jackery that does not take much current it's only like 265 watts which is nothing really especially when you think of like a hair dryer is minimum of a thousand some of them are almost twice that then we plug the power hog jackery into this circuit plug the computer into that same circuit so it's a whole circuit just for these two things no problem at all and then we click process and we let it go we're all set my entire life charges in about two hours and that'll be good for over a week of power it's not too bad I think that generator is maybe like a two gallon gas tank and I can recharge everything five times six times maybe it seems like everything I have and everything I use runs on power, and it kind of does. But the only reason it's noticeable is because it's a little bit of uh, thinking and time and work to get everything to run. It's not like at your house, everything just plugs in and works. We got about half an hour, 45 minutes till dark. I'm going to run down to the shooting range. It's, uh, it's past time to change the target configuration. Remember, I made all those tripod stands so that I could practice the steel challenge speed shooting kind of thing with my 22. And I haven't moved it since I built all that. I don't usually like to leave the generator running and everything charging without being there because I wired all that stuff up and I'm a dummy. But uh, it's close enough we should be able to 
smell if the cabin catches fire or anything. Yeah, so we've got basically from the table there back to, I guess we could set a tripod back here if we needed. Maybe we'll measure table to sort of the hillside, measure to the chain, and measure to where I have the tripod set up right there. Can't remember why we chose this exact stage to set up. I think it was because it was the closest in and they were almost all the same target size, so it was the easiest. But I've spent enough time plinking these guys, these five targets, the way they're set up now, it'd be really fun to change it up a bit. Remember we discussed my thinking when I, when I built this whole thing and set it all up, which is basically, if you're supposed to have a 20 inch target at 30 yards, in my brain that's the same as a 10 inch target at 15 yards. Is that true? Must be, right? Since we're here, we should just take one last plink before it gets changed. Of course, I don't know when I'll get around to changing this. I just want to do the measuring so we can do the figuring while it snows tomorrow. Maybe I can draw all, I don't know how many stages there are. Five, six, eight? I think maybe eight. It's amazing from time to time, I'll get a message that says, so-and-so just sent you 20 bucks. And it says like, Merry Christmas or buy yourself some ammo. I probably spend far too much time thinking about how I spend the money that people donate towards this channel. But if they just say, buy yourself a box of 22 or Merry Christmas, that's where it goes. Thank you guys. So ignore the uh, color or the size of the target. This has five, one, two, three, four, five. And the goal of this one is just to hit all five, any order you want except for this one, this has to be the last one. So there's a beep, you shoot them all. If you miss one, you can go back as long as you haven't shot this one. This one stops the clock. You know, if you could, you just go all the way across, but you have to end at that. So I usually go this one, this one, and then back the other way, one, two, three, or the other way around. You could go this, 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 this. I don't have my timer, so I'll just get ready and then you say beep and I'll go. Nope, not yet. I'm not ready yet, gosh. I love putting in these softies when they're really cold because they stay smushed down for a long time. So you get them rolled up. You can jam those suckers right into your brain hole if you want. Only problem is then you gotta wait a while for your, your skull to warm them up. Ah, that one's taking too long. We'll just double up. Oh yeah, now I'm not gonna be able to hear you say beep. I'll, I'll take care of it. Beep. Missed the last one, but we got it. What's the time? Nobody knows. Let's try it the other way. Start on the right. Okay, ready? Beep. Oh. Kind of forgot what I was doing for a sec. By the way, I don't know if you've ever wondered this. Every time I shoot, put the gun back in the holster. Of course, I put the safety on. How long have I had this? Less than a year? and I completely wore the safety out. It got till it was just flopping. It wouldn't work anymore. I had to send it back in. So if you ever wonder, every time I draw it, you see the safety right here? Safety gets flipped off, shoot, and then put it back on, back in the holster. Don't worry, I'm, I'm reasonably safe. I mean, I'm safe with handguns. I'm just not safe with anything else in life. It's kind of cheating if you say beep yourself because you know when it's coming, but beep. That was all right. Beep. That was a good, see, we're getting better. Maybe we should leave this. Nah. Cell phones were just, just coming into existence. When I, uh, right after college, when I was just about to go on the Appalachian Trail, I remember my parents both asked if I, or one of them asked if I shouldn't get a cell phone to take out hiking with me. And then one of them asked if I didn't want a handheld GPS. And I was like, oh, I don't need any of that crap. Eventually I got a cell phone because of two things. One, the idea of always having a flashlight in my pocket and a camera all in one piece. That was just like, I couldn't pass that up. And of course, once you get a phone, you gotta always have a phone. But there's, I don't know if you guys know this, maybe everybody knows this. Most, all, at least all the new iPhones or iPhones going back several generations have a measure app on there. I might have this wrong, but the older phones, 
I'm just gonna make something up like iPhone 11 and back or something, had the measure feature and it used the camera. So you're actually looking at what the camera sees and there's a little dot and you can pick a spot, click it and then drag it over and click it again. And it'll tell you, you can measure up a wall, you can measure a floor, but the newer iPhones, maybe like 12 or 13 or something, they have LiDAR. I don't know if that's maybe what the other little spot is there. So apparently it's a lot more accurate. I never ever think to use it, but I do think it's really cool that you always have like an any distance tape measure in your pocket. Anyway, I have a laser measure that's always in my backpack, but you have to be able to hit something in here. It's just like a, it's just snow. Plus it's a cheap one. It only goes like, I don't know, 30 feet or something. So anyway, God, that was a lot of explanation just to say, let's try measuring it with the phone, see if it works. There it is. You want to measure the distance from my nose to my eyebrow? See, you just thought I was a hillbilly living out in the woods alone. Turns out I'm an iPhone salesman. Yep, so I clicked it right where I normally stand. There's a painted rock underneath there, and it's dra just dragging a line out. So seven feet to here, 12 feet to here. And I don't know if you could see that, but it leaves the measurement on the screen there. So you can see where the beginning of the line was, the end. It says 35 feet, 10 inches. There we go, we cleared that out. Now, let's go side to side. Let's say the edge is this tree here. We're not gonna go any further out than that, so click there. And then we'll drag it out across here. I guess that's about as far as we'd wanna go right there. So let's see, what doth the phone say? Click there, 35 feet, side to side. You know, from living out here all this time and basically just building full time, the most practical thing I've built, it's gotta be the cabin with the heater. <laughs> but, the, well, you know, the quality of life, the biggest bump in quality of life has to go to the shower. Being able to do that every day, regardless of the weather, is just phenomenal. But the winner for just the most fun has to be that shooting range. It's just like, you know, regardless of your tired or it's cold out or it's hot out doesn't matter it's always fun just to go down there for 15 or 20 minutes and screw around <laughs> some total bone brain dropped one of these in the snow it's a good thing this is something that's made my life better this little rack right here just being able to dry stuff out really quickly or warm it up in the winter it really does make a big difference especially if you're used to living in a tent where anything that gets wet there's nothing you can do about it. Plus, as you know, that's really great for cinnamon rolls. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. If you don't mind, I gotta get that uh, memory card right there. I gotta, yeah, while the generator's running, I gotta download you. See you in the morning. Hopefully it'll be really snowy. Oh, stupid storm. It's getting really windy, but the snow keeps getting pushed off. They're still seeing a lot of snow, but it hasn't started yet. I was thinking by the time I ate breakfast this morning, I was going to have to go out and pack the trails, but we're not going to have to do that until it's almost dark, I think. I think we should work on a tattoo. I was trying to find pictures of cool tattoos that I could somehow trace, which, since I can't print anything, I am going to have to try to trace my, front, my phone screen. So here's what I've chosen I want to try to do. I took two screenshots of it, the head and the body. I'm wondering if I can take a piece of tracing paper, lay it on here, trace half of the dinosaur, go to the other shot, move the tracing paper over and kind of line it up and trace over it. Will it work? I don't know, probably not, but let's try it. I mean, we gotta do something with this day. I think after last week's video, I only did a little bit more and then I put all this stuff away. Did you see the dirty ax I did? You wanna get it tattooed on your forehead? So we need a mechanical pencil and some tracing paper. I'm wondering if we take this out of here and then we just rip this top layer off that we need to trace on. Oh yeah, one other problem. You could still touch and move this screen under the paper. I wonder if the, if the lead will screw it up. Let's see, I won't, <laughs> I won't be able to touch anything. 
Nope. Okay, we can make it work. I guess we could touch the screen with the coffee measuring thing, right? Yep, that doesn't move it. It's not too bad, not too bad. Kind of hard to see. Now, can we line it up with that one somehow? You know, let me tell you, as a guy that's been uh, tattooing for almost two days now, let me tell you what the key is to this. You know, after using these for like three or four or seven days or something, I didn't notice how bad my close-up eyesight was before, but now when I don't put these on, I just go like, everything is so freaking blurry. Like, how could I even use this picture? It's so blurry. And then you put it on and realize like, oh, it's actually crystal clear. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you get to be a certain age and I guess you just got to be a, a puss. You got to go get yourself some glasses. <laughs> I just thought of. If you didn't watch the last video, you're probably wondering <laughs> why is this dude out in the middle of the woods in a snowstorm tattooing or learning to tattoo? There's really no reason. I just thought it would be a fun thing to learn. I can do it out here. I don't have power, but I can plug my cheapo machine in here. I just got the whole Amazon kit for like, I don't know, 60 bucks and then bought a couple extra things. 100 bucks, I just thought it would be a fun thing to do on a snow day and so far it is quite fun, quite enjoyable. Quite weird. If you live alone in the woods year round, especially during the winter like this when the days are so short, you gotta have hobbies. There's a lot of detail I left out, but I think that's gonna be good enough. Probably should have stopped and checked to see if this was actually working on the back side of this, but I pressed so hard I almost went through the paper a couple times, so that's all we're gonna get. Yep, it printed on there pretty well. Nice. I didn't fit his tail. I figured I'd put that on later, but... Alright. Well, this will be the uh, scratch pad. This will be for outdoor tools, of course. And this one will be for dinosaurs. A little lightly used pet stick. Something like that, do you suppose? Ooh, try not to wrinkle it too bad. Oh, ho, ho. that worked way better than last time. Yeah, that's much better. Man, we got a lot going on again, all at the same time. I've been listening to really loud music in between starting and stopping the camera. Can't do it anymore with gloves and all this crap on. So we went to headphones. Hope you, hope you don't think this is too impersonal. Then again, if you thought that, you wouldn't be watching this channel. Because have you ever seen me without uh, some kind of headphones on? I'm going to do this all with the same needle cartridge. It's the one you guys saw last week. If you want to see doing this for the very first time, you can watch last week's video. I'll put a link here. We even looked at some of the stuff under the microscope, like the, the tattoo itself on the fake skin. You could see where it cut through some of it. We looked at the needles and stuff. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, because I'm no artist, I don't know how to shade. I can't look at this and just like have my brain know what needs to be shaded. So I'm just going to use one needle for the whole thing. Just practice making lines. That's it. That's how you do it, right? It is? Yeah, I thought so. It's a start. I got all the black lines in there and they are very wiggly. It's going to take some practice. I'm going to try doing a bunch of shading because I left a lot of stuff out just doing the black lines. We'll shade it in later. I think we, I think we're hungry. It's not really snowing too hard yet, but every now and then the wind just rips through. Just kind of crazy that there's still snowballs on the tree branches from a couple days ago. Must be really iced on there. Weather's really not that bad. I'd 
I would stand out there and cook, except that uh, when you get a bunch of wind, the stove out there doesn't work. It doesn't have a very good windscreen. So I guess I'll just grab stuff in a pot or pan or whatever and come in here and cook. I wonder if this is the first frozen food that's ever been cooked at Ringworm. Might be. It was so dark in there, <laughs> I couldn't even see how many I was pouring into the pan. And of course I couldn't read the directions. Are you supposed to do boil them, I guess? That's good. It'll put a little moisture in the air in here. It's kind of dry. Wow, I wondered why they were start, starting to unwind so fast. I don't think you need to boil these like normal pasta for 10-15 minutes. So you get rid of the stinky food waste out here. I kind of like to heat up the sauce because it would just be better all around, but I don't want to have to clean the dish. <laughs> This I can just wipe out and leave in here for a while. Is this shaker cheese real cheese or is this like sawdust or something? Because this has been in there for a couple years, not refrigerated. And it smells fine. It smells like day one. I'm going to eat it anyway. You know what I just thought of? There's one other thing I kind of needed to do today. My 100-pound uh, propane can just ran out in the shower last night, so I had to take a 40-pounder from the man cave and put it in there. And it's a lot shorter, obviously. It st sits right on the floor and gets a lot of shower water on it. I think it's going to freeze to the floor if we don't build some kind of foot underneath that. We might have to run in the man cave, turn the heat on for a minute, and build a little platform. Though, i got to say, I'd rather just lower down the movie theater do some more tattooing or some guitar playing. I just started putting all my clothes on to go do it, but I really don't want to go out. Oh man. I mean, what's one more shower, right? We could do it tomorrow. Yeah, when the storm lets up, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow. Only thing I'll say about this that I'm not a big fan of, my new hobby here, is it's not a good one to start doing and then walk away and come back to later because your ink's out you know the ink's going to dry up it takes up a whole bunch of space have to have all this junk out now that i actually ate something i should probably just finish this and then put it away let's let's attempt a little shading shall we i'm not sure what the right mix is here let's try five drops two three four but, well, six seems right. And then we'll just fill that up with water. Whoa, should have gloves on. Hmm, wonder how far up you want that. Maybe like that. That seems perfect. Let's see, we definitely need some black in the back of the mouth there. shaded around the edges. I think we should make it some color though. Yeah, let's do some red. Ooh, now it's coming down out there. It's finally started. Let's try half water, a bunch of red, and a drop of black. What do you think? Will that work? Mm. Okay, yep. Uh, we'll do slightly more than one drop. black sauce. Guess that's it. My neck's getting tired anyway. You want to see how trashy I am? Somehow I would seem less like a garbage heap of a person if I, you know what, there's a chance I'm going to spill this. <laughs> Something about throwing it out the window seems disgusting, but if we go out the door it's alright. Plus, you can see what it looks like outside. Oh yeah, it's a winter wonderland, except for that spot right there. I finished it. 
I couldn't help it. I want to put this stuff away because I want to put the movie theater down to watch a movie. I want to see my bruised dinosaur. I learned my lesson that uh, you shouldn't try to do shading and stuff if you don't have any idea how to do it. <laughs> if you notice all the blotches and everything in here, I actually, it's it's a, not supposed to look that way, but once I started doing it, I was like, I kind of like the idea of a dinosaur looking all patchy like that, so I just went with it. All right, let's be done. All right, well... It's too late to do anything of uh, meaning, so we might as well watch a movie. I think I better grab a shower. You want to come with me? We'll go see if the propane bottle's frozen to the floor yet. I was thinking this was going to be a one-day ringworm snowstorm video, but uh, most of the fun stuff we're going to have to wait till tomorrow morning now that it's dark. So what say we don't stress? We'll just, uh, you know, we'll finish this up tomorrow. And I was just thinking, it's nice that I ate a pretty late lunch. Because that means I can have popcorn for dinner. Popcorn is only available when the movie theater's down. Well, you know that. Same goes for all the uh, candy in the candy tray up there. Except <laughs> I had to text uh, Sarah a couple days ago. Tell her I either, I either have to make the ceiling in here higher so the table can go up further. Or I'm going to have to cut the legs off my chair. Because if you get on the chair, you can just stretch up there and reach the candy bowl. It's no good. I have no self-restraint when it comes to candy. It's awesome out here. Love it. Doesn't that place look cozy when it's snowing? No better place in the world to be right now. This one is mighty frozen down. This is the one I got to exchange, put in there, and raise it up a foot or two. Nice big bucket of ice chunks. That'll take a while to cook. Oh man, squirrel's been in here again. Urgh. trying to keep my head up so you can see on the camera with my headlamp but snowflakes are going right up my nose holes this might not actually be the best night to make popcorn so i really do have to do it outside on the steps there and uh i couldn't figure out i couldn't make good jiffy pop for a long time i couldn't figure out what the problem was and i finally realized that I was cooking it too fast. So you gotta stand out there for like five minutes anyway to make a good, a good, what do you call it? A satchel of Jiffy Pop? I guess with a good waterproof jacket and some gloves, it would be worth the effort. I really don't go to the trouble to get the whole movie theater out unless somebody else is here or I have a specific movie I wanna watch. But it just feels like with it snowing and blowing like that, I don't know, I gotta watch a movie. I think the coolest part about this movie theater is that it's about 50% the size of my entire house. <laughs> so it probably takes up like 100 square feet, almost. And, you know, I built it as sort of a gag. It wasn't really a joke, but I didn't, I don't know. I didn't really think I'd get used that much or the quality would be very good. But it's a great place to watch movies. It really is. And it takes up 0% of my home when it's all retracted, which I, I think that's the coolest part of it. Only thing I still need is a, an actual boat winch over here to raise the table up when I'm done. I mean, you can get it back up by yourself without much of a problem, but you got to move all the stuff out of there. You really have to get down there and pull pretty hard. I know the movie hasn't started yet, but we should just see if these are still good. Holy cow, have you ever had a churro flavored Kit Kat? <laughs> they are amazing. Oh, that feels better. Uh, that was the first time I almost got stuck in the shower. Both the zippers got frozen down on the bottom. I think I splashed too much water on them. 
Actually, now that I think of it, <laughs> I did put snaps all the way around the outside. I wouldn't have died, don't worry. All right, come on, let's go pop this. Crap, I forgot there's no cooler out here to pop on. I wonder if I can do this with one hand holding the stove. It also might be too much wind. You know, we've got all these different flavors, five different popcorn flavors, and some of them are really good, but nothing beats movie theater popcorn oil and salt nearly every time. Not nearly, every single time I ruin my popcorn by putting way too much of both on, and I'm going to try not to this time. All right, that should be reasonable. It looks good. It's nice and shiny. Because it's a big screen, I always try to watch big screen kind of movies, even if I'm not really into them. If I if I think of it after I watch a movie, I start downloading the next one, so it's ready like in a day or a week or a month later. And I think I've got one downloaded, and I remember it didn't look that good, but... Yep. Dread. It looked like a good big screener. Nothing else, it's probably really loud. Hey, there's one more seat here if you want to sit down and watch the movie. You don't have to worry about it. It takes the same amount of power for one person to watch a movie or two. All right. We didn't get as much snow as I'd hoped for, but we still got to do some packing because there is more on the way. If I left this three, four days, I might not be able to get through anymore. I'm going to take the trailer because the wheels stick out a little wider so I don't have to do quite as many passes. Not that it matters. I'd do 50 passes if I had to. Okay, two more laps. <laughs> that was so fun. I got back and unhooked the trailer just so I could take the four-wheeler and do a... <clears throat> Whoa, what the heck was that? And do a lap out on the walking shooting range. That's That trail doesn't go anywhere. It's just kind of on its own. And I started out there right here, hit the brakes. I want to leave it. I'm going to wait for this next big snowstorm and then do it. I love... I love riding a four-wheeler when you're right on the verge of getting stuck. I think if we get another six, eight inches, it'll be really hard to get through out there. So it's fun. It's fun if you get stuck and have to winch out a couple times. All right, I'm gonna measure this thing out real quick. There, how's that? That ought to work fine. I'll 
pine scraps. It's kind of too bad they're pine because uh, it's going to rot out, but for now it'll work. Oh, I didn't think of, uh, I got to find a place to put that huge propane can, that 100 pounder. It's so old that, uh, I don't know, I couldn't get it recertified and you guys know it's like too hard for me by myself to get it in and out of ringworm especially when it's full because it's a couple hundred pounds and a cylinder like that is an odd shape to try to move. I want to do something with that old can though. Pretty sure I could get this nozzle off of here so we could let any remaining vapors out of there maybe this summer or something. That thing is, it's very, I think it's quite thick. I think this is aluminum. I thought maybe I'd like cut it in half and I don't know what I'd use it for. If you got any cool ideas, put it in the comments. Because if I can't find anything to use it for, it's just going to sit out here. I don't know how you even get rid of these. Maybe I could take it somewhere and recycle it. Who knows? No, I think it's steel. Steel like I could cut with the angle grinder. I don't know, just kind of curious to see if I like canoed it in half what it would look like. Maybe you make some kind of table out of it or something. Even the full 40 pounder is quite beefy. Uh, that was a little bit too tall. My fishing lure is in the way. That should work out fine for the moment. Hey Tito! Well, he's not here. That's a real bummer. This is the kind of stuff that dude's built for. I'll just put it over here so it disappears. Look at that, it's gone forever. Oh, I promised myself before I play guitar, I have to do this uh, shooting range thing, figure all these. So I could think of three different ways to figure all these. I could either do it on the computer, I could put it in like a CAD program, put in all the distances, all the measurements on here, and then figure the angles and shrink them down by however much I need to. Or I could just do this geometrically, figure the angles, I think the most fun way to do this though would be to use calipers on a piece of paper. It's the least exact, but it's kind of fun to do. So let's try this one out. These are two 10 inch plates, which I don't have. I've got this one, that's a 12 inch, and then these two I don't have. But let's draw all this out and then we'll figure for different size targets. Let's see, this is the longest number we're gonna have to measure here, 25 yards. So that's uh, 75 feet and my calipers go up to 150 millimeters. So I'm gonna take just double all of the numbers on here just to make it as big as I can on my piece of paper. So let's say we stand right here. That's where we'll measure from. We go over nine. So that we're gonna double it to 18. 18 this way and 18 this way. And then we have to go out 75 feet. So we're gonna double that to 150. So 150 is that line. Okay, so we got one target right there and one target right there. This would actually be a great use of graph paper. All right, so there are the five targets. And then we're just gonna connect them with diagonal lines to each one. Okay. Making sense so far? So these two furthest out here are 18 uh, by 24 inch rectangles. And I'm just gonna figure how big of a circle that would be. That's uh, the same square inchage as a 21 inch circle. So we've only got a 12 inch circle, so we're gonna do 12 20 ths of this distance. And then we can put our 12 inch circle there and it should be exactly the same from what you see. Of course, one's a rectangle, one's a circle. I get that part, but it's gonna be close enough for us. All right, so it's 151. So 12 over 21 times 151 equals 86. So 86 feet out, be right there on that line. And that's where we put our 12 inch target. Great. 
Isn't math just the neatest? It really comes in handy sometimes. Is anybody following this out there? Is it too much? This isn't what you signed up for, is it? I'll just do it. I'll, I'll show you when I'm done. Can you make any of that out? So this is where the big targets were, but we have smaller ones, so they're going to be moved to there. We had smaller targets here, but we have bigger ones, so they're going to be moved to those two. And then this one was bigger, and we're going smaller. We're going to put it in there. Now we divide all those back in two to get the actual feet. So the furthest out target in a straight line is 43 feet for this setup right here. The chain of targets out there that we measured is 52. We just make one straight line from where you stand out to the chains, that's the center line. And we just go out so many steps and then this way so many steps and that many and that many. It should set up just fine. So actually if I had the right size steel targets for all of this, if I had the 18 by 24 inch plates, they would have had to be 75 feet out. And that's all the way at the top of the hill behind the shooting range. So they wouldn't have worked. All right, we'll see what the longest one is here. See if it'll still fit, but I think this is going to work great. Looks like most of these are going to work great. I found one problem with one of them. There are these huge steel targets and they're only like 25 feet away from you. So if you take a big target and you change it down to a 12 inch target, the thing is so freaking close. I don't think it'd be safe. I mean, we could turn some of them at an angle. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Most of them will work fine. Thanks for hanging out with me uh, during the snow day. Come back next week and uh, I don't know. It's going to be really freaking cold. Like too cold to work on any outdoor projects. I mean, I'll still, of course, be outside. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to be out there day after day. Which, honestly, I mean, it's just fine. I, I like the heat as well as anybody. The tattooing's fun. We'll go out and move some targets around. Who knows? Come on back. If, only if you want to. You don't have to come. You do whatever you want. Thanks for watching.